In the year 1600, a priest named Giordano Bruno was going to be burned at the stake for heresy. Among his many crimes was believing in a radically different model of the universe, the heliocentric model. Developed by Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus, this Copernican model held that the Earth revolved around the Sun, which remained stationary at the center of the universe. The Copernican model led to a fierce debate. The Catholic Church defended the Ptolemaic model of the universe, which held that the planets revolved around a stationary Earth. Meanwhile, astronomers like Copernicus and Galileo Galilei vigorously defended their new heliocentric model. As men like Bruno would find out, getting on the wrong side of this dispute could prove deadly. But what if there was a compromise between the two systems? That same year as Bruno's death, a Danish astronomer named Tycho Brahe would come up with an ingenious model that could bridge the gap between the two systems. His work would be the culmination of nearly 4,000 years of naked eye observations. However, something was rotten in the state of Denmark. From the next four to 74 minutes, we will investigate Tycho's dark secrets. PBS Nova Science Now presents a PBS Nova Science Now special sponsored by PBS, brought to you by PBS. This is Tycho's Dark Secrets. In the 16th century, the most widely used model of the universe was called the Ptolemaic model, a model invented by the Greco-Roman astronomer Ptolemy in 150 AD. The Ptolemaic model is an updated form of the Aristotelian model. This was a geocentric model, which had an unmoving Earth at the center of the universe. Ptolemy's model differed from Aristotle because of the numerous mathematical innovations he developed to improve the predictive accuracy of it. One of the most prominent examples of this is his use of the epicycle. This is an invisible point that plants rotated around as they rotated around the Earth. Ptolemy came up with the epicycle to solve the problem of retrograde motion. This is the strange looping motion planets make as they travel across the sky. Ptolemy explained this phenomenon by introducing the epicycle, a secondary orbit that planets traveled on while they rotated the Earth. This innovative mathematical idea successfully accounted for the retrograde motion of planets. However, despite the ingenious use of mathematics and measurements, the Ptolemaic system had a few glaring issues. Even with the epicycle, the math still didn't quite add up for Ptolemy. So he went back to the drawing board, or rather, the drawing tablet, in order to address this problem. He then developed the eccentric. This idea was rather eccentric, if you will. Rather... The eccentric was a planetary orbit that centered on a point outside the Earth. The Earth was the center of the universe, but the planets actually rotated around a random point slightly off-center from Earth. It greatly improved the predictive accuracy of his model, but it left a sour taste in the mouth of many later thinkers. Effectively, it seemed as if Ptolemy was making up vast mathematical constructions just so that his model would fit the data. Despite these flaws, the geocentric Ptolemaic model would remain mostly unquestioned for the next 1500 years. That is, until Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus published his seminal work on the revolutions of the celestial spheres. In this work, Copernicus would introduce a new model of the universe, the heliocentric model. The Earth, along with all other planets in the solar system, rotated around the sun. During the 16th century, the debate raged between supporters of the geocentric model and supporters of the heliocentric model. However, one man wasn't satisfied with either. Hmm. Hmm. Anyone can see the flaws in the Ptolemaic model. Ideas like the eccentric have no basis in actual observation and should be dismissed out of hand. However, the Copernican model also leaves me with doubts. If the Earth is moving, how come we didn't feel it at all? Moreover, given how fast we have to be moving, how come people aren't flung off into space. There must be another way. Tycho Brahe was a Danish nobleman by day, world-renowned astronomer by night. His big break came when King Frederick II of Denmark granted him a tract of land on the island of Haven to build a state-of-the-art research institute. 
From his new fortress of science, Brahe spent every night looking at the stars. He would soon develop painstakingly accurate observations of the heavens, some of the most accurate the world had seen up to that point. However, unlike his contemporaries, Brahe's observations weren't assisted by any outside implements. Instead, he only used the naked eye. Using his naked eye data, Brahe would come to develop his own model of the universe. Called the geoheliocentric model, it was designed to combine the best aspects of both major systems. My geoheliocentric model has all the other benefits of the other systems with none of the drawbacks. The Earth is still firmly stationed in the center of the universe. A warming Earth is just a pure impossibility. In turn, the Sun revolves around the Earth. However, the other planets revolve around the Sun as it is going around the Earth. This way, the problem of retrograde motion is solved without any of Ptolemy's mathematical monstrosities. Not only that, but when it comes to predictions, it is just as accurate as Copernican and, Ptol and Ptolemaic models. Brahe used much of his wealth to advance his astronomical pursuits. However, he held a dark secret. As any nobleman does, Brahe likes to indulge his passions. One day, however, this would lead to a sinister consequence. Tycho Brahe was a very colorful character that led a very interesting life. He lost the bridge of his nose in a drunken duel with his third cousin and had a new one fashioned out of silver and gold. In his Danish castle, Tycho held grand luxurious parties. However, at one of these parties, something happened. Tycho had a pet moose whom he had great pride in. However, this moose would become a tragic victim of his lavish lifestyle. He killed the moose. He killed the moose. He killed that moose. Killed the moose. It was clear that Brahe had a key role to play in the manslaughter of his own antlered pet. <laughs> it had seemed like another one of Tico's many parties. However, his prized pet moose, left unattended, had a bit too much of the party's beer. The moose, unable to keep its balance in its stupor, fell down a flight of stairs, meeting its tragic end. Although Tycho committed heinous acts against moose, his contributions to astronomy will be forever important. While his geoheliocentric model would not stand the test of time, his remarkably accurate naked eye observations would be integral to the work of later men like Kepler and Newton, indebting the modern field of astronomy to the Danish thinker. He may have had his dark secret, but all non-moose owe a debt of gratitude to Tycho Brahe.